Hey, this is Steve. Let's design a stopwatch in State Designer. Now, I'm not a stopwatch expert, but I'm pretty sure that a stopwatch has two states, stopped and running. And its initial state would be stopped. From the stopped state, a user can start the stopwatch, which will transition to the running state. In the running state, a user can stop the stopwatch, and that'll take it back to the stopped state. So let's try that out in the events list and see if it works. Okay. There's also, of course, some data in the system, and that's the amount of time that the stopwatch has been running for. We're going to keep track of this time in milliseconds. We'll want this data to change through two actions, add time and reset time. In the add time action, we'll increase data.milliseconds by 1,000, or one second. And in the reset time action, we'll set data.milliseconds back to zero. Let's start with the reset time action, because that one's a little easier. We want this action to run whenever the user clicks on some sort of reset button. So let's add an event called reset to the stopped state and have it do the reset time action. The add time action will be a little different. We'll want to fire this action automatically once every second while the running state is active. So to do that, we're going to define it here under the running state's repeat property. This property takes an object with the on repeat property taking our event handler, and this is where we're going to do that add time action, and its delay property takes an amount of time to wait between handling those on repeat events. So let's give this a try. In our data, we can see our seconds starting to go up. I'll stop the stopwatch by clicking stopped, and it should pause. I can also resume by going back to the running state, and if I stop it again, then from the stopped state, I can reset the time by sending the reset event. So this is working. But before we get into anything else, let's make this a little bit more precise. I'm going to change the delay here from one second to one tenth of a second. I'll also change our add time action so that it increases data.milliseconds by 100 milliseconds instead. Even though our stopwatch is keeping track of its time in milliseconds, our stopwatch user would probably prefer to see that time in seconds. So let's add a value to our state called seconds that turns our milliseconds into seconds. I'll add another value for minutes and for tenth of a seconds too, or decaseconds. And I'm an American, so I had to look that one up. And let's clean up those numbers by rounding down our minutes and seconds and then wrapping our minutes and seconds around the number 60, and our decaseconds around the number 10. So a little bit of JavaScript math here, but I hope it makes sense. Let's try that out, and that looks good. So okay, we've built our state. Now let's build ourselves a quick user interface and see if we run into any problems. Let's start with our two buttons for start and stop. I'll make clicking on the start button send the started event to our state, and I'll do the same for the stop button and the stopped event. And then I'll do the same thing for our reset button. We can try those out. And okay, they're working. Now let's also disable those buttons if the state can't currently handle their event. So if the started event won't do anything, we want to disable the button that sends that event. We can use our state's can method here, which is going to return true or false depending on whether the state can currently handle a certain event. We'll want the first button to be disabled when local.can started returns false, and likewise for local.can stopped. Remember that the started and reset events are only available when the stopped state is active, and the stopped event is only available when the running state is active. When those events aren't available, the call to local.can will return false. And let me make this into a grid. And finally, let's add our time. We'll do this as a heading, and it'll look something like this. So that sort of works, but you know what? Let's make that a little bit better. Let's pad out those seconds with some zeros. Our scope here includes Lodash, a utilities library. So I can use the underscore dot pad start method to add that zero. And let's also style it just a little bit by making the font family monospace, and we'll also wrap the decaseconds in a small tag. Okay, not bad. 
Now, maybe you noticed this before, but looking at our prototype, I can see a problem with our state. This reset button is still active even after I click reset. I guess I would kind of expect it to be disabled since clicking on it isn't going to actually change anything. Now, this button is always going to be active whenever our stopped state is active. And our stopped state doesn't know or care whether there's any time left on the clock. So maybe our state isn't so simple after all. Now, there are a couple of different ways that we could fix this, but I'm going to fix it this way. Let's start by giving our stopped state two states of its own. One called reset for when the time is at zero, and another one called paused when the time is above zero. And since we're starting our timer off at zero seconds, let's make the reset state the initial state. In the running state, let's make this transition point to our new paused state instead. And then we can move the reset event onto the paused state and add a transition to reset. All right, that's working the way that I think it should. You'll notice that we can still fire the started event from either reset or paused. And that's because as the parent state to reset and paused, stopped is always going to be active whenever any of those other two states are active. Now, maybe one last thing. Our state doesn't really allow for this, but we can use the chart here to force the transition to the reset state, even if there's still time left on the clock. And we'd never want to be in this state if there's time on the clock. Again, we can't actually get here using our events, but if we wanted to be extra careful, we could move this reset time action to the reset states on enter event so that we can be sure that if we're ever in the reset state, if that state is ever active, then data.milliseconds will also be set to zero. And all right, that's our stopwatch. I'll put a link to the project in the video description and you can take a look at it yourself. And from there, you can create a copy that you could edit yourself and see if you can make it better. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribing for updates. All right, once again, this is Steve. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.